Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. I think my customer is a sound engineer or something sir. Our cable network requires electricity to function. But her cell phone is fine. This is not how you fix network congestion. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. I think my customer is a sound engineer or something sir. A while ago, manning the senior line, I get yet another call from our North African subcontractors over at Camel Telecom reminding me of the depths of their expertise. Slash you slash bite wave, senior line, this is bite wave, you may send me your ticket. Abdul Halim, of course sir, this is Abdul Halim. One moment please. Abdul Halim, sir, are you new, you are not on the list of senior staff. Slash you slash bite wave. Nah, I've just been on it for 10 years. I actually spent a couple months helping design the current senior ticket system, I'm pretty sure I put my name on the list myself. It's the only name that starts with AB, and it's in alphabetical order. Abdul Halim. There you go sir, it was well hidden. Yeah, second name from the top, but whatever. Horrible ticket, of course. It says not enough sounds without explanation, category indicates at least that it's a TV audio problem, procedural questions not even answered, and there's even some Arabic chat cliff notes. I start prepping the coaching report. Slash you slash bite wave, there's not much I can read in your ticket, please explain the issue, and the steps you've gone through so far to troubleshoot. Abdul Halim, well, I don't quite understand the problem, I think my customer is a sound engineer or something sir. He says there's too much sound in the middle and not enough on the sides? I press the button adding a recording of the call to coaching report, because I can already sense where this is going. Obviously our support for home theater problems is quite limited, we pretty much just make sure the set-top box is configured for Dolby sound or bypass it to troubleshoot. But I need to know how much this guy doesn't know. Slash you slash bite wave, so, we're talking 5.1 or 7.1 audio setup. I bait. Abdul Halim, high definition 60 inch TV with HD PVR, sir. Um, Philips brand? I preemptively reach for the acetaminophen. I check the guy's file, he's been with Camel Telecom for over 18 months supporting our products. Our tools allow me to see the 7.1 system connected via HDMI, as his would if he had any idea where to look or what it means. Slash you slash bite wave, no, that's not what I asked. Let's start with the basics here, if I tell you mono, stereo, surround sound, which of these words are familiar to you? Abdul Halim, I know the difference between mono and stereo, yes. You think his sound is mono? Slash you slash bite wave, nope. Beyond mono and stereo, there is this nifty thing called surround sound, where you have typically five or seven speakers. Many of our customers use such setups, and it doesn't take an engineering degree to use. Our support level is limited to ensuring the STB parameter for sound is set to Dolby, and explaining to the customer that he must configure his home theater himself if the issue persists. We can also disconnect that system and connect the STB directly to the TV to demonstrate any issues are not on our end. Abdul Halim, so the customer has connected like, computer speakers to his TV somehow? Oh for the love of the flying spaghetti monster. Slash you slash bite wave, I won't be able to give you a full class on this line, but later today a mentor will take the time to explain surround sound to you, our tools, and our level of support in more detail and we'll run you through some practical exercises. For now let's not keep your client holding any longer. Go back to him, go to settings, audio, and make sure the parameter is set to Dolby. I'll hold. Abdul Halim, yes sir. They're the only ones who call us sir abusively every other sentence. Every time they say it, it feels like I'm hearing forgive my incompetence, have some worship and ass kissing, so that we may be spared the wrath and fury of your scathing coaching report. And it doesn't work. Abdul Halim, yes, sir? Thank you for holding. It was not set to Dolby, but it is now. 
Customer says he has sounds on the sides now, and three in the front. Um but the rear ones don't work. Slash you slash bite wave, and that was pretty much all we support when it comes to home theaters. But since we got so far and made him wait this long for a simple setting change, ask him if he ever got audio from his rear speakers so far, and if not, whether or not he checked the batteries on those wireless speakers. Abdul Halim, oh. These works like Wi-Fi too? Slash you slash bite wave, you'll see this in mentoring soon, but our TV diagram tool shows the details of the audio system when it's connected via HDMI. The rear speakers on this model are wireless, which is very common. Wireless is however not to be used interchangeably with Wi-Fi. Abdul Halim, okay thank you sir, please hold. I'm being mostly paid for my legendary patience, I remind myself as I swallow one Tylenol for the headache and spike my coffee. Then I finish the coaching report. Abdul Halim, oh we did it, sir. The customer said I was right and thanked me, he is satisfied with the service, it appears his system is okay now. Slash you slash bite wave, yeah we did it. Normally this kind of call is considered basic and does not require escalation, but we'll make sure you get all the tools you need to be able to handle it yourself in the future. Need help with anything else? Abdul Halim, oh no, that sounds good. Have a good night sir. And it's noon, but that's okay, I'm not explaining time zones to this guy. I hang up and pull out a little side tool senior staff homebrewed to keep track of especially horrifying subcontractor calls. Add the wave file there too, with one little well-earned star. Three or four little stars in your wave files go to Oxymoron, our director of subcontractor quality. Sometimes when we're really bored we play a really bad one in the lab, so that everyone can have a laugh. Frontline subcontractors are often as bad as end users. The extra challenge you face when you're talking to them instead of customers is that you know they're being paid for their ignorance instead of paying you, but at least they're polite. All of ByteWave's tales on TFTS. Our cable network requires electricity to function. But her cell phone is fine. Manning senior line some time ago. That night, there's an area we service that's experiencing power loss. Pretty simple and clear cut, clearly written in the ticker, and yet so many of my calls go like this. One was particularly memorable. Slash you slash bite wave, senior line, this is bite wave, you may send me your ticket. Random argumentative subcontractor, RAS hey, bite wave, I have an offline modem, just checking if it's network or I need to send a road tech. Ticket sent. She wants her internet, there's a big wow raid or something. Slash you slash bite wave, okay, did you poll the neighbors to see how many are offline? That's how you determine if it's a network issue or not. RAS, nah, forgot that part. You can check the whole cell anyhow, will be faster? Slash you slash bite wave, slower, actually, and it's quite important to run the neighborhood diagnosis in the future if you're not certain before contacting senior line. In this case, we won't really need to because this cell falls within the power outage area. RAS, nah, that I did check though. She has power. Yep, another one of these I tell myself, sipping some coffee. Slash you slash bite wave, and you know this because she told you she has power at her place, correct? RAS, bingo. Slash you slash bite wave, end. The entire cell is offline. RAS, well then it's clearly not the power outage, you'll open a network emergency ticket I can link mine to? Slash you slash bite wave, nope. It's the power outage, the appropriate ticket for that is at the top of the ticker in bold purple. RAS, but I just said that she has. Slash you slash bite wave, SHE has power, yes. Part of the network doesn't. Just to go over the basics real quick, if there's a power failure in network equipments in the cell or upstream despite the redundancies and the emergency batteries, nobody's stuff is going to work. Even if they have power at their place. RAS, yeah, okay, okay, but why would the network batteries fail? Slash you slash bite wave. Our emergency power batteries are essentially plastic cases with six car batteries and a Home Depot lock on it. 
They get robbed all the time, and we often only notice when there's an outage. We're working to improve this, but for now, during a power outage, rely on the ticker, the cell diagnosis tool, and the neighborhood test. This is a clear-cut case. RAS, yeah, but that story doesn't add up. Her cell phone is fine, she's got data and all. You did not just say that to me. Slash you slash bite wave, I'm happy for her, tell her to be mindful of her data limit as she tethers her cell phone's data to attend her WoW raid, from what I can see she has several gigabytes of mobile data to spare. RAS, tether. What? I just meant it can't be the network since she's got cell phone data. Slash you slash bite wave, and I was just doing you the courtesy of pretending I didn't hear that. A mentor will be with you shortly to explain how our cable network and our mobile networks are parallel, and how power outages affects each of them. We can't go through all this on this line with a customer on hold. Suffice to say at this time you'll have to take my word for it, it's normal, and it's not our fault that her internet is down, and it has nothing to do with her cell phone. Please explain that to her gently. Currently we have an ETA of 3 hours on the power grid fix, so say 4 to 6. RAS, okay fine. But you know, this would be easier if there was an easy way to know if an offline modem just doesn't have power in our tools. Slash you slash bite wave, what a brilliant idea. The moment I can have offline modems and network equipment report back with specifics, I will call systems right away and have them update all monitoring tools with this feature as a top severity change control. RAS, alright, alright, I get it. Thanks, letting her know now. Evening. And that's bread and butter on senior line during a power outage, sadly. Filled up my ticket and the coaching report. Added his little star and the wave of the call to the homebrew tool we made up to keep track of terrible subcontractor calls. Then I looked at my phone. More calls waiting in the priority report outages queue. F asterisk 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 that, I paid my dues, time for a union break. All of Bitewave's tales on TFTS. This is not how you fix network congestion. Network congestion is practically a thing of the post for us now, I don't think I've had to report any for a couple years now despite the rise of unlimited data and multi-band speeds. My ISP eventually got the hint and invested properly in its infrastructure. But back around 8 or 9 years ago, it was quite a problem. We had allocated so many QAMs to HDTV that the internets were feeling the squeeze. Almost every day, I had to escalate to networks tickets about congestion. Sometimes they could do something about it, sometimes they replied with plans for change controls that should have it fixed eventually. The problem was budgets upper management just didn't want to invest back then. As a result they used low data caps and ridiculous overcharges. And, I'm ashamed to admit, we had a brief fling with secretive torrent throttling we lied about even in-house. Frontline staff were officially to be told there was no throttling to make sure they didn't accidentally admit it to customers. As a result the senior staff had to deal with frontline agents getting an earful desperately trying to find an excuse for their customers so they could credit overcharges, which we almost never did and everyone was complaining about throttling. Tons of wasted work hours managing this nonsense. The culture of denial was so deeply ingrained that the internet product director called Torrent's network abuse even when the torrentade content was legal and went so far as drunkenly rant against online gamers at an office party. I guess he wanted every user to just read their emails and maybe post on dig off peak hours. One day, I escalate such a congestion ticket that I got a particularly humorous if honest response to. Saturated upstreams, several nodes with packet loss and 250 milliseconds internal pings, should be around 10 milliseconds. Network sends it back an hour later. Networks, can't reroute traffic, too high everywhere. Sent resets to 30 modems which were saturating upstreams in the listed nodes, they're all down to 90%, should last us past the peak rush. I pasted this in senior chat and everyone was either laughing, crying or facepalming. I marked it back as active and sent it back to Networks 2, which is the group for their supervisors. Slash you slash bite wave. 
This is not how you fix network congestion. We really just denied service to 30 customers who were actively using their service as a means to reduce congestion, hoping some of them wouldn't notice for a few hours? If some of these guys call about peak time interruptions, what is Frontline supposed to tell them once they see its manual software resets? I was probably a bit generous there by suggesting most Frontline agents could identify the source of the reset, but hey. The ticket stayed open a while, until the managers over there started getting automatically escalating alerts. Ignore an active network ticket of a certain severity level long enough and after three warnings, it eventually pages the director and then the VP. So the director eventually gets paged and closes the ticket. Director of Networks, to stop torrenting until I get my expansion budget approved? Hands tied. Anyway those nodes are fine now, closing this. Of course they're fine, he closed it at 9 a.m. Thankfully, this didn't become a routine solution. After this ticket, we didn't see anyone else resetting modems as a fix, we just lived with the congestion when it couldn't be fixed. Oh yeah, sometime later they lowered max upload speeds on all plans too to help with this. Thankfully, those days are long over. All of ByteWave's tales on TFTS.